Every day in Iowa City, I see people in passing, and I think to myself, I wonder who that person is. Did he grow up here? Or did he come for college? And end up staying because he got a grant for his research? Or maybe the love of his life? Because a townie decided. decided to raise their kids here. In Iowa City, today I see people, I see people every day, and wonder, what's her story? And wonder, or what she does for a living. I see her around, and walking her dog. Maybe she's the writer of that, of that book I loved so much. Maybe she's a dancer. A chef. Iowa City is interesting like that. The guy sitting next to you on the bus could be your new favorite singer. That lady who helped held the door open for you could be a filmmaker. A politician. I see people. I see people every day and wonder. And wonder. What's your story? 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 Sandra Louise Dias, better known as Sandy Dias, started out as a young professional taking studio portraits. But quickly, as her skills grew, she realized that she wanted to spread her wings. Who gives us permission to be an artist? Sometimes, as in Sandy's case, you just have to go with your instincts and just make your art. Sandy Dias has been taking pictures, documenting Iowa music, people and places, and telling stories with her art. And this is Sandy's story. Sandy, thank you so much for being on the show. You're welcome, Katie. One of the great things about getting to do this show is I always see people around Iowa City and have little things I'd love to ask them about their lives. And as a photographer, you have photographed so many people in the Iowa music scene. And I wonder, you know, you must have so many stories behind these photographs over the years. What would, what would you say is one of the most interesting stories behind one of your musical photographs? A specific example of a memory I have about photographing one of my friends um, who happened to be a musician um, was uh, when Dave Moore got ready to do the Breaking Down to Three album. That was quite a few years ago. Uh, Dave hired me through Red House Records to do the shoot and it was supposed to be all color. And in those days, I didn't do as much color as I was shooting black and white. We photographed quite a while in this area. It was a rough area. The house that had been there had been um, torn down, had been blown, blown apart. You know that tornado hurricane we had in the 90s? Yeah, that's when it came down. So there wasn't much left. There was uh, an old clawfoot bathtub in the yard. And it had a window with broken glass on it. And I just like, oh, I love this. It's just, I don't know if I see metaphor, if I see, I don't know what I see, but I see something and it attracts me. That's where I want to take photos. So I spent probably an hour and a half to two hours moving Dave around, taking color photographs of him, slides and color film. Those days, no digital at that point. And um, Dave is somewhat uncomfortable getting his photo taken, even though we know each other pretty well. Um, he's, he, he doesn't really enjoy it. A lot of people don't. The facial twitches. And the, yeah, uh, they, yeah, but, so, but we, we, had a, we did a good shoot. And in fact, they used one of the photos that I took on the front cover of the CD, and then they used quite a few inside the CD. So it was very successful. But anyway, so we're done, or I think we're done. And I'm like, okay, Dave, I think we're finished. We got some good stuff. And he goes, okay. And we hopped in his little car to go to his cabin on the river. Get out of the car and we're both kind of relieved. There's a bunch of logs piled up and there's a canoe that says Iowa on it. And I'm like, wow, this is a cool area. It's a little nice environment. Again, it starts triggering me to see images. But I'm thinking, no, 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 no. We're relaxing, we're relaxing. I'm not working, I'm not working. So he was like, hey, how about some whiskey? And I said, that sounds good. And it was a beautiful day, and we just sort of sat there and talked and, you know, relaxed. And then his dog was there, Zoe. And he's throwing this um, stick at Zoe, and uh, Zoe's jumping up in the air. And I'm going, uh, Dave. I think I need to take some more pictures. You just couldn't hold, you couldn't hold back. It I was couldn't just... hold back anymore. <laughs> yeah, we have to take some more pictures. Do you mind? I said, I'm not going to do any more color. I'm just going to get my 35 out, my 35 millimeter small camera, put some Tri-X in, and 
we'll just do a couple rolls. He goes, yeah, yeah, it's okay. And he's more relaxed. Well, he's got the whiskey, so he's a little more relaxed. We both are. We both are. And we already know we got the work done, right. so it doesn't really matter anymore. I've seen those photographs, and it's funny to hear that story now because <laughs> you, can, you can see sort of Dave's intensity with the camera, and then these ones later on with the dog. He's quite obviously just, you know, having a nice day. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And so much of what you photograph is the music scene, and you do happen to know a lot of these musicians and so how does that change your relationship when you don't photograph someone that you know versus somebody you know? I don't know exactly how mm. to explain it. Generally what happens in a portrait shoot for me is um, the initial nervousness um, and it's not just the sitter, it's me. I get a little nervous and I think that's a good thing because it kind of primes you and gets you Hyper focused, mm. and uh, you have to put your sitter at ease somehow too. I want people to really look their very best, and I, I like intensity. I like beauty. I, I like a sense of who the person is, and generally, especially with people I don't know, but also with people I do know, it does take a little bit of time to get into that comfort range. Mm -hmm. And I like to shoot for at least an hour and a half. And that may be taking a small break, setting up lights, moving to a different location, changing camera. It might involve quite a few things, or it might not. It might just mm -hmm. be intense, you know, let's do this, let's do this. It must have been a lot different to shoot for an hour and a half on film <laughs> than it is to shoot for an hour and a half with a digital camera. I have been shooting on digital, primarily not very much film anymore. Mm. Was it different to shoot? Well, like, did just you technically. Technically, uh, but do you take as much time to set up a shot when it's as disposable of a I do. medium? I, I, think, I think because I was at it for so many years, somebody mentioned that to me. They said, wow, I just had my photographs taken by, I don't know who, and they didn't even stop taking pictures. It's just like, you know, shoot, shoot, shoot. Put it on motor drive, you know. Right. So you shoot very differently. You really think about your shots. Mm. Well, that comes from using film. Um, what I do like about digital in that respect is you don't have to change. You don't, you're not broken. I mean, until you run out of memory. You're not all of a sudden like, oh, change the film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there is no break. But I think I still shoot like a film photographer. Um, and I think that's a good thing, although, I don't know, I do shoot more, but then you have to edit a lot, too. Yeah. yeah. Editing is, is really time consuming. It wasn't nearly as time consuming with film. I like the part about not working in the dark room so much. I was wondering about that. Do you still maintain a dark room? I or? do. I have one downstairs. Um, just used it about three weeks ago, but I don't use it like I did. When I printed all those photos for that book, I mean, that took me umpteen hours working mm. in a basement. No light, smelly chemicals. <laughs> yes, there's magic. I realize there's magic in the dark room, and a lot of people love it. They even love the smell of those chemicals, which I don't. Mm. <laughs> it's such a lonely place. Mm. It's, yeah, it's nice because you can kind of get into your own thoughts and be by yourself and focus, that's true, but I can only handle so much of that and I need to be recharged. <laughs> and people are kind of who recharge me, so it's that people energy. That's more than anything, that's why I'm a photographer. It's the photography itself, the taking and the making of the photos, not the burning and dodging and making the beautiful fiber print, you know, that's not nearly as important to me. Well, and you do teach the technical aspect mm -hmm. of photography, but when you teach about the lyrical The lyrical, the poetic. The poetic aspect of photography, what, what do you think is the most important thing that you have to share with your students? 